Parents within the Polk County community have many questions as to their children's return to the school year. Coming up on Polk Place, we'll talk with John Hill, Deputy Superintendent of Polk County Public Schools, and try and answer some of those questions. Make sure you stick around. Welcome to Polk Place. I'm your host, Brian Lacey, and joining me in studio, as we said in the intro, the Deputy Superintendent of Polk County Public Schools, John Hill. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Brian. It's a pleasure to be here today. Nice to be on your show. You know, everybody remembers their first day of school, yeah. and, and this year, going to be a memorable one. It's going to be uh, one that uh, uh, is is challenging. We've, right. we've uh, gone through the first few days. Talk to me a little bit about that, if you will. Well, absolutely, um, and I agree with you. I think it will be uh, a memorable, uh, quite a memorable first year experience for, for all of us, and uh, certainly for our children. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're sitting at day three, and things are going well, um, as well as can be expected. And so let me say it this way. I'll use a quote for Superintendent, from Superintendent Bird. Um, she said, we are confident but we are cautious and obviously we're confident because we worked very hard to create the processes and the, the procedures and the plans to, to, to launch a successful reopening. And we have great people. You know, our people are very innovative, creative, uh, and, and just very dynamic in what they do. And they're very passionate about children. So our, our teachers, our school-based support staff, our school-based leaders, along with our district support staff, they're all just uh, outstanding, and they, they bring uh, passion, expertise, uh, just a, a total commitment to making sure our kids get what they need. And I think we've all learned in this COVID experience that education is, is a priority. Um, cautious, because we, we have counted the cost. We, we understand what we're up against, and we know that uh, there, this uh, COVID experience and this pandemic uh, has its challenges. Well, currently you have three ways for learning. The first is campus learning. Let's talk a little bit about that. Give me the basics to that. So the basics of campus learning is it's, it's traditional learning. It's, it's going to school. Uh, it's a face-to-face -face learning experience. It's uh, having the opportunity to learn from your teacher, interact with your peers. It's, it's just our, our typical traditional learning uh, format and experience. And so uh, it's, uh, and the, the difference is obviously children have uh, face coverings mm -hmm. and there's some unique dynamics to it, but that's our, that's our um, typical and traditional means of education. Let's talk a little bit about Campus eSchool. So what's unique about Campus eSchool is this was created to, to, for those parents who weren't quite ready to return their students and kids to brick and mortar school. And so this allows them to do the distance learning but with an outstanding, outstanding um, program. And so we, we've created an e-learning process, uh, a digital process, where students now will be able to get all their learning uh, online, uh, but it will be integrated and connected to their teachers at their school sites. And so uh, accountability for lessons, for learning, uh, grading, attendance, uh, structured schedules, all those will be part of that learning experience. We learned a lot from last year when we had to do the distance learning, and so eSchool has now uh, uh, been, I, I want to say upgraded, uh, significantly upgraded, and we now have a system and systems built to really support that learning um, based on the lessons we learned in, in uh, the last quarter of last year. All right, let's talk a little bit about Polk Virtual Schools. Now, what's unique about Polk Virtual is this is a, a, a long-term solution. This is really for those students and those parents who want their children to have a virtual learning experience for the long term. They can get all their K-12, meet their K-12 requirements through this process. So this is for those students that don't intend on uh, transitioning back to a brick and mortar, but they are very interested in the virtual learning experience. 
Now, according to some news releases from the school district, parents are almost half and half when it comes to choosing between going back to campus and the online options available to them. Now, were you surprised that it was nearly so evenly split? And will having less students on campus help with social distancing? So the answer to that is no and yes. Um, so <laughs> we were not surprised. We anticipated uh, based on surveys and the information that we were gathering that uh, there would be uh, uh, quite a few parents uh, that were interested in their children coming back to a brick and mortar uh, campus learning environment. And at the same time, we know there's parents that are still very hesitant and concerned about that. Um, so they were going to choose the uh, virtual platform, the e-learning. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that having less students on, on campus will uh, help us in terms of social distance in our students and it will really help us launch into the year and, and, and really get a feel for what it's going to be like utilizing face coverings and uh, the social distancing and many of the other uh, strategies we're using to provide for their safety and well-being. It seems like no matter where you look in the news whether it's parents, whether it's teachers, everyone's concerned for the safety. We've heard about the mask, we've heard about social distancing. What are some of the other things <coughs> that you're doing to help protect both teachers and students alike? Right, we've worked diligently to build out uh, uh, a, a very um, comprehensive safety plan with our COVID protocols. And not only are we utilizing uh, the face coverings and the social distancing, but we are emphasizing and, and provided opportunities for the constant hand washing, which is very important. We're also making sure that we are, um, you know, doing a tremendous job of cleaning our campuses and, and uh, disinfecting the high touch points and areas throughout the day of the schools. We're using those same cleaning protocols on our buses. We're using the same type of uh, protocols on our buses with the face coverings as well the distancing. And in addition to those, we're doing temperature checks and, and uh, for our staff and our students. Now for our staff, we're doing 100% uh, with students, uh, depending on the size of the campus. Uh, we're working to get at least 20% of the student population uh, per day, mm -hmm. but most schools are exceeding that and some schools are, are, are exceeding uh, that significantly with the temperature checks. As a former principal at Auburndale High School. Um, how, do, how challenging will it be for administrators to, uh, to keep the campuses clean and safe? Right. Well, fortunately um, for principals, we have, a tremendous, uh, we have a tremendous team of custodians and uh, our custodial services. Uh, they do a tremendous job in cleaning our schools. So, um, we're very confident that principals will be able to work closely with our custodial services and uh, work throughout the day to make sure our campuses are clean. So uh, we're confident that we can do an outstanding job of keeping our campuses clean and uh, disinfected the, and disinfecting the, the high touch areas. Now, do you have any other messages that you'd like to share with parents and the students as the new school year begins? Right. Well. Uh, I think the, the number one message that I'd like to share is uh, obviously uh, this, this is a monumental task and um, I think we all agree that there's nothing more important than educating our children and so this is something that, that uh, we are all in this together. This is, this is a team effort and we're all working together and, um, and so making sure that you're assessing your child's health each and every day, uh, checking for symptoms, if they do have symptoms, they're not feeling well, we, we want them to stay home. In years past, you encouraged good attendance, come, mm -hmm. fight through it, uh, not, not in the pandemic. We want uh, our children to stay home, and, um, and I think that's the number one message. Also, um, please encourage the, the protocols that we're using at school, outside of school as well, um, because we, we think that if, if we all work together, and do a good job of wearing masks, um, trying to do those things to protect and mitigate our children when they come to school, um, we think we'll be in a very strong position to be able to be successful. 
John, where can folks learn more about the, uh, the district's plan for the new school year? Well, thank you. That's a great question. Um, I encourage our, our parents and the community to go to uh, Polk FL, uh, polkschoolsfl.com and go to our website, uh, check out our, our social media outlets, lots of great information there, and then strongly encourage every parent to make sure that they sign up for, for um, Parent Portal. Um, they can contact their schools, get their PIN number, lots of outstanding information can be received through Parent Portal. We got just a little bit of time left. Um, I'd like to you to talk to the parents about patience, and effective communications with the school board yeah. in, in, in ensuring a good school year. Okay, thank you. Um, you know, communication uh, is, is so important. And, and uh, I think being patient, one of the things we've said for everyone is uh, this is the time in, in, in society where we need to be uh, filled with grace, mercy, and flexibility. And if we extend that to one another, and, um, and communicate our needs to one another. We are here to serve them, and we want to serve them. And so making sure that when you call, if you have a concern, if you have needs, let us know, because we want to work with you to get those needs resolved. And then, and then we appreciate patience. I think we all appreciate when people treat us with what I call goodness, kindness, and righteousness. Throw a little gentleness in there, that always helps. And so uh, we, uh, have high standards for ourselves and how we how we communicate to our students and to our parents and to our community and we appreciate very much when our parents uh, uh, reciprocate the patience and, and, and the kindness and so we're very thankful for our parents and we, we've got great students they're doing great things um, being at the campuses this week our teachers and our and our school-based leaders uh, along with the district support has been magnificent. Our children are wearing their masks, they're cooperating, they're excited. You can see their eyes lit up and even with the mask on you can see they're excited. And, and our parents are being very supportive as well. So uh, I appreciate you bringing up the communication piece because at the end of the day we're all in this together and we want to work together as a team to, to successfully educate every child. Well, I want to thank you for coming in and joining us today and any time during the school year that you'd like to come back on and talk a little bit more about what's going on, feel free. The chair is yours. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'll be back. The mission of Polk County Public Schools is to provide a high quality education for all students. Polk County Public Schools has more than 150 school sites located throughout Polk County. They serve more than 100,000 students. The school district is the seventh largest in Florida and among the 30 largest districts in the United States. Schools are examining all operations to provide the safest setting possible during these challenging times. With safety procedures in place for the upcoming school year, Polk County Public Schools is ready for students to continue exploring their learning opportunities. Face coverings, social distancing and barriers, sanitation procedures and other safety measures are being taken to make sure your children are safe at school. Now, if you need more information on school options and cleaning procedures, you can give the school board a call at 863-534-0500 or look them up on the web at www.polkschoolsfl.com.